I always feel like I'm the best to ever play this game, but you know, there's so many other great ones and I'm happy to just be a part of their, uh, part of their journey. For me, it could be compared to Michael, Magic, you know, Kobe, all the ones that's making so success in the league. You know, it's great, and I'm gonna just keep working hard. And someday, it could be another one that could be compared to me. It's just been a pleasure to, to be in this league for, for 20 years, and however long I, you know, able to go, whatever the case may be, I, I've had a hell of a ride. I'm a little bit jealous of LeBron, and let me tell you why. We're all part of the barbershop talk. Greatest analyst. One of the greatest shooters, greatest power forward, one of the most dominant big men. But I would love to have my conversations with the greatest of all time. I'm not in that conversation. He is. Kobe Bryant is. Michael Jordan is. And I ask people this all the time. Every night I check this the other day. When he passes up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points, what you going to say about LeBron? Is he the greatest player of all time? Is he one of the greatest, greatest players? The whole LeBron thing bothers me because he's a great, one of the greatest of all time. It just looks like we, we keep trying to find why he's not great. Like we, we, every day you turn on ESPN or any of these, we keep looking at why LeBron is not great instead of celebrating his greatness. And so now I watch his game and I say, does he have a weakness in his game? And I start from the rim all the way back to half court. He can do everything. But no, let's take it even back. Let's take it all the way back from the rebound. Mm -hmm. Right? He does everything now. So now he's good at everything. He's shooting high 40 and three points now. And his range is out to the logo. Mm -hmm. Right? You know he mid-range. He can post you up. He can face you up. He's still going to dunk on you. He can, he, he's, his ability to see the floor now is so much is better now because he's seen every coverage. Like, it's at the point now where I'm like, I'm looking at this guy and say, I've never seen nobody get better at 36 yeah. years old. Like, this, this doesn't happen. And I feel like this is the best... As a fan now, I'm watching. I think this is the best LeBron that I've seen. And it's not, he's not jumping over, hitting yep. his elbow on the rim. <laughs> he's just hitting his right here on the rim now, you know? And, but it's changed, but he's, bro, I've never seen this before. I'm a fan of Bron's. It's a phenomenal player, but it was just something about his game this year to where I look like, I said, damn, man, if what I'm seeing out of dude and some of the moves that he was making this year, if he had developed that earlier in his career, man, look at <laughs> here. Look at here, bro. He, I mean, he was already scary, but damn, to add some 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 more into his bag, because it it's crazy that this man is at he, his bag has gotten deeper in year 19. <laughs> when I grew up, we celebrated our stars. Yeah. You know, we celebrated our heroes. Um and now we don't even let them be stars or heroes. We're looking, we're tearing them apart. The people who were criticizing them were 55, <laughs> you know? And they were looking at it through the lens of a 55 year old where they've seen these mistakes and they've seen all the experience and they've gone through all the experiences of life. And they thought LeBron should know at 20, at 25 even, you know, that he should know how to lead a team. He should be, uh, he should know how to talk to players when they're down. No, you don't, you learn that with life. And it's, it's hard to be LeBron James or any superstar in any entertainment, sport, uh, athletic or business industry, because um, all eyes are on you. Uh, but he's handled it extremely well. We gave the keys to the whole entire business to an 18 year old kid and now he's 38 years old and he's still dominating. I don't think we should be surprised. I think we should congratulate him and celebrate him as much as possible. Um, continue to, you know, enjoy the shows that he put on because it's not going to be for too much longer, you know, whenever he decides to play. But I'm enjoying the show, and I wish we could have got a chance to play against one another. But, um, you know, who, who knows what could happen down the line. So It's hard to overstate how insane it is that he's in his 20th year doing this. And I know there's advancements in science and all this stuff. Yeah, and no, that's not it. That's, not it. That. that's he's, not it. He's 38 years <laughs> Fuck old. Fuck them advancements in science. And he could lead the league in scoring. Yeah. Like, when we were younger, we think about, like, oh, older LeBron, what does he look like? Maybe he's, like, this slow center. No, he's still playing like LeBron. Yo, because we all said that. Because a lot of people felt like because that Bron's skills would, wasn't equal to his athleticism. Uh, but – and he ain't nine threes other night. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's adapted his game to shooting a little bit more than what he did back in earlier in yeah. his career. And and he still got that youthful energy. Yeah. He popping around everywhere, diving over the fucking front road, like still taking off on people. Like at this it's inspiring to see. Yeah. As a competitor, it's like, man, fuck that. I could do that shit too. <laughs> but then it's like, damn, he's in year twenty. Yeah. 
He's 38 years old. He goes through so much, yeah. you know, off the floor as just a man in general. But family, he got so many responsibilities. He still love the game, still getting up, playing back-to-backs and shit, still playing 40 minutes. It's like, man, salute to that. It's hard to have that conversation about the greatest of all time when a man is still putting on his jersey, right? right? But when he's done, his, his, his lineup, his statistical lineup is going to be the greatest that's ever played the game when it comes to scoring, assists, rebounds, so forth and so on. I come from a Jordan era. I am biased, and I'm going to be a bias to the day I pass away. Michael Jordan will be my goal. Always but that doesn't mean it. I'm not taking anything away from LeBron. LeBron is amazing, but Michael Jordan is my goal. I play basketball because of Michael Jordan. Yeah. When, when he, needs, he needs to average 16 points uh, this year to pass up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Come on, LeBron. Yeah. LeBron. yeah, so if he pass up the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points, does that make him the best player ever? No. All right, so hold on. Okay. No, you say no. So if somebody is better than me and I pass them up, are they really better than me? Just asking. He averaged 20 points a game as a rookie and it only went up each year after that. Um, and every time it would be like a, LeBron's the first to score this amount of mm-hmm. points. So first to do that, you know what I'm saying? So I felt like he had the time on, and he was already the talent for one. And it was just a matter of if he wanted to play that long. Yeah. If you don't have killer instinct, how you get 38,000 points? Yes, sir. I'm just right. asking. Right. Just asking. I'm not like a, a natural scorer. Uh, like, I loved like getting my guys involved. I've always been that type of guy. And to sit at the top of the food chain and the most points scored in, in the history of the game is like, it's weird to me. Like. They don't never, they don't call, they don't ever call me. They don't never call me. When they talk about the, the best scorers of all time, they never mention my name. Did that piss you off? Yeah, it pissed me off. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. It was a player. Always, score. I was a player. Always... I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying. And, and I, people might disagree with me, but understand this. The greatest scorer is not only its consistency, its longevity, and its amount. He passed Michael Jordan three seasons ago, and he's going to add to that, right? Or before his career ends. So to pass LeBron James in all-time playoff scoring records, somebody is going to have to do what? Average 30 (laughs) points a game and go to like 13 NBA finals. That shit's not gonna be broken. That, the, the playoff one's not, and then he's gonna pass Kareem. So as much as we don't view him as a scorer, right? Like Steph's greatest shooter, Kevin Durant, greatest like weapon as a scorer, cause he's so big, but like, who's the greatest scorer? He's number four all time right now. I didn't think he would want to play this long. That's the thing. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think he would want to play 20 years until he's 38 and feel like he want to play 25 years now. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think he would. Cause that's what it takes to beat those records is longevity, you know what I'm saying? So it was a surprise more that he wanted to play this long more so than his like him as a player breaking a record. LeBron James, we can talk about his longevity, and that's part of the reason he's breaking this record. He's got the fifth highest career scoring average all time in the NBA. Better career shooting percentage from two than Kevin Durant, way better than Kobe, better than Jordan, Ninth all time in threes. On top of that, he's fourth all time in assists. I I just the constant narrative about nitpicking things with LeBron, most of them are just not factual. LeBron James is not clutch, right? That's another thing that people bring up all the time. LeBron James, second most game tying or game winning shots inside the final minute of fourth, the fourth quarter or overtime. Kobe is number one. They're the only two guys that have more than 80. Kobe has 88. LeBron has 81. LeBron James has five game-winning buzzer beaters in the playoffs, the most ever in NBA history. I don't know where people are coming up with these. LeBron James, is he an all-time great scorer? No, he is the all-time greatest scorer. The great thing about LeBron, he brings it every single night for 20 years. Right. Because them Cleveland teams, he had to bring it. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he put them on his back. That's hard. Yeah. And he did that and took them to the finals. Yes. Oh, man. They didn't have clearly enough talent yeah. to, to be in, in the NBA finals. In 2007, they had no business in the NBA that, finals. That's right. That's right. I always look at guys from my era like I thought I would never compare somebody to Michael Jordan. But this guy, LeBron James, 
from a, a basketball like he does everything well. He what did what didn't Michael do well? He did, he Michael did everything well. LeBron James just bigger, stronger, faster. That's the only difference. Do you think having this conversation sometimes takes away from what LeBron has accomplished? Yes, though? because he's not done, and we're talking about everything he's doing now, right? We talk about the GOAT, the greatest of all time. That's when a player is done, and now you can put their resume versus the next resume. Right now, we've been, we've been talking about LeBron as a GOAT since 2010. Yeah. We're 2021. This man still got another five years to play if, he, if you know, God willing, he don't get hurt. So... Like what I said, he will be a GOAT. Someone's going to say LeBron's my GOAT, hands down, nothing else. Just like I say, Jordan's my GOAT. It's generational GOATs. Well, since I was in ninth grade um, and I turned on ESPN one day, LeBron James was the guy that people say is the next Jordan. In my mind, I was like, this is the best player, so I have to be as good as this or I have to look him in the eyes at some point in my career. So, you know, that was always in the back of my mind as I worked, as I played games. I wonder, uh, because that's what was told to me, that that was the new guy. That was the next Jordan. So the dude came in at, what, 17, 18 years old, already had the hype. They already compared him to Mike. They compared this mother to everyone. And all he did was carve out his own space. This mother did all this and, like, where the con ain't no controversy, bro. All he doing is uplifting, speaking, mm -hmm. doing his part, his role, responsibility from the time he was 18 years old. Do this mother get a, a, a year off? And when he got in it, you got to think it was Kobe, it was Garnett. It, like the league was yeah, worse. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And he Tim came Duncan in and, he's and he, carried, he carried his own. There is no denying like his greatness in terms of what he can do on the court. And like sometimes you're in, even when you're playing against him, you're in awe because mm -hmm. it's like the way he can control the tempo of the game, the way he can dominate scoring, passing, you know, just his overall just presence and his IQ, like all that stuff. Like we all talk about it. And you have to appreciate your competition if you want to beat them because there's got to be that, you know, as coach would call it, the appropriate fear. Absolutely. But, um, <laughs> you know, I still, for me, Michael's the greatest player ever, but LeBron is going to have the greatest career ever. Yes, yes. Um, and, and what he's doing right now mm. is incredible. So huh. it's, it's unbelievable. I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two, two best players that I've ever witnessed. They're very different, but, you know, however you want to rank them, you know, they're, they're right there together. That's what people got to understand. It's yeah, a lot of errors. great players that play sports, but it's errors of GOATs. And everyone want to make one GOAT. It's, it's impossible to make one GOAT because as great as LeBron is, it will be another. I was a huge Michael Jordan fan. Like, that was just like, that was like the mythical, I've never seen full games or seen him play in person. All you get are these highlights. You got game winners. You used to got him locking people up. You got him dunking. And in my head, I'm like, oh, he, he does it all. Like, this is like the best dude to ever do it. And then LeBron comes in like 2003 and we start watching him. And then I get older and I start realizing more about basketball and my, my, my mind for the game understands how hard certain stuff is. And I mean, I don't know when it changed, but there was somewhere around the year six, seven, eight for LeBron where I was like, yeah, this dude's, this dude's got to be the best basketball player to ever play. Like, there's nobody that can do what he's doing. And then he did it for another 10 years. So I was like, well, what do you, what do you want him to do? Like, it's, it, dude's amazing. We're all going to miss him. You know, I, I was, I, I played against MJ, but I was sad when he left. But man, I, I, I'm going to be sad when Braun going because I, I, I just love watching dude play. He's just – he's so fun to watch, you know, whether it's his scoring, his passing, just how he he creates an environment around his team that it just looks fun to be a part of. Right. We have never seen in the NBA a player like LeBron James, and he breaks a record every single night just to remind you that you've never seen this before. Some people will some people will have a record and they're dominating one category. But this dude is dominating. He's in the top ten, Shannon, in in, in every single category. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't that's never happened. Right. When it's all said and done, it's gonna be hard for people to look back 10 years from now and say he wasn't the best. 
I, I think LeBron has been a tremendous basketball player, not only for himself, but for the league, right. and also for Cleveland. You know, it, it just it's just hard for him for me to say that he's anything but but the, but the top. As far as playing basketball, you got to enjoy this guy. If you're a basketball fan, you got to sit back and go, "Wow, how do he do that?" Or I always say, "Boy, I wish I had his speed." Yeah. You know. But some of the stuff that kid does out there, he's by far, you know, Colby was always my favorite since, yeah. since I got out. I don't like that, by the way. But, uh, but uh, LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. I don't by think, far? I don't think there's really anyone next to him. I think he's there, then you go down the list. You know, when we came here three years ago in the first meeting, um, we, you know, we, we weren't fearful of his shot. We were fearful of his power and his penetration and his passing. But now you fear everything. And I think maybe the greatest testament to LeBron is that, you know, five years ago, he was one of the top five players of all time. Um, and f from five years ago till now, he's, it seems like he's ten times better because he's added so much skill to his game. MJ is MJ. Like, we all wanted to be like Mike. Like, I wear 23. Come on now, like, we all want to be like Mike. But what LeBron has been able to do and how he can control a game and to, to do it this long, like, MJ retired. Like, this shit's grueling. Like, yeah. going to the finals year after year after year, LeBron went eight or nine straight Nine years. straight. Like, MJ took a break and right in the heat of that shit. LeBron mm -hmm. ain't taking no break, you know what he did? Went again and again and again and again. With different guys every time. And again. So for me, that's why it's Brian over MJ for me. And on top of that, the talent nowadays is way better. And I'm sure one of the old f is going to say, you out of your <laughs> mind and this, that, and the other. Blah, blah, blah. The talent is way better. You know, Brian is, you know, my, my GOAT. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. The fact that he can play all five positions, the fact that he's done this shit for 17 years consistently, no drop off at any, at any time. time. And we've been saying, well, not we. You can excited. You, you big teething right now. Like, you really feeling this. But I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> he's, he's the best all around player of all he's, time. He's not far. Oh, yeah, there's no question. All right, do I'll give him that. Yeah. I'll but if that. you ask me, do I got to start with, well, I got to start an organization and I need a bad motherfucker? Him. No, I'm going with Mike. Okay. But outside of that, it's him, dog. Hands down. Over Magic, Bird, all of them. LeBron is in a class of his own. He is absolutely unique. He's Michael. He's Magic. You know, he's Kobe. Uh, he's Jerry West. You know, he's Bill Russell. You take all of these great, great players and you put them in a blender, mix them up. LeBron's got something of all of them in him. The difference between Michael and LeBron, when Michael came in the league, he surprised everybody how great he was. When LeBron came in the league, they expected him to be great, so it was already on him. Uh, Michael, in, in some ways, we allowed him to grow into greatness. Uh, we didn't allow LeBron that, and he's still overachieved. LeBron is better than anyone ever thought, yeah. which is amazing. When you think, if you read it, if you just, you should go back and read the articles about LeBron coming into the NBA and then say he overachieved that, it's remarkable. He rarely gets hurt. He always shows up. He's had some of the biggest clutch games in NBA history, uh, yet no one knows it. It's incredible. I think LeBron's going to be one of those guys when he retires in 10 years from now, people are going to say, man, LeBron James was one of the best players ever. Yeah. And we're going to be back saying, we were trying to tell you that 20 years ago, you're too busy telling them, us that he wasn't. You know, from the time that he first came in the league, you know, Saw it. his debut in Sacramento where he was attacking the rim with, you know, ferocity and right. finishing. And right. as you can see here, when he had that uh, phenomenal second half against us, you know, we went to fifth straight conference finals at that moment. <laughs> you know, we didn't play 500 games in five seasons. Right. We in quicksand, my man putting the turbo button on, and he's still doing that. It's like he hitting the R1 on you. He's still hitting the turbo button to this day. Man. And yeah. we've been spoiled. It's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. Uh, you know, and not only that, he came into the league with a lot on his shoulders. Right. You know, right. everybody was saying this is the next guy, and he's been able to withstand and hold that and be great. Like this is that he's more, it was funny, he's more complete.
Yeah, he's more complete. He's That's, more complete. There you go. So he didn't lose. He didn't. He didn't lose his athleticism and take care of his body. Like he does an amazing job. But the man above said, "Boom, yeah. you're blessed." Uh -huh. He has no. It's nothing in his mind. He don't think. Like, he don't think about shooting a logo pull up because it, he doesn't have. Like back when he was even in his prime, when he was the best MVP, he still had a lock in certain mm -hmm. things. Whether it was in his three point shot or whether it was in his free, throw, whatever it is, he doesn't have a lock anymore. The only thing that he ain't doing is shooting 100, shoot 90 percent from the free throw line. That's the only thing left for this man to do. Outside of that, he can do everything else on the floor. LeBron came into the league, yo. First game in Indiana. Oh, so pissed. First game in Indiana, he gave me 25. Mm. He went to the fans and said, "This is your best defender." I heard this, right? I'm fucking furious. I know you're furious. You, I'm, I'm, I walked the other way. I'm like, this kid is great. I got out of this kid is fucking really good. <laughs> But I'm super fucking pissy, disrespect me, and I want to walk up to this motherfucker. And you know, he, he but he bust my ass, yeah, right? He done to all of us. You know, so he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First game. Mm -hmm. So that was like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. But like LeBron, when I first started guarding LeBron, like LeBron, I didn't really know what he was gonna do, and he was quite successful. But it was still like, you know, it wasn't as predictable, which made it a little harder. But Jordan, I knew exactly what he gonna do. And then Kobe was pretty difficult too. I mean, those guys, is, you know, those guys. Are, but if I had to give it to one, I would probably say Jordan. Um, and you, and you, and you, and maybe tie with LeBron and Kobe. Man, I rank him up there, man, with Kobe, right. Mike. You know, I mean, some of the things that he accomplished, uh, and he's still playing, and he right. got time to do some more. Right. I mean, he's special, man. He I mean, um, you think about it, man. He, he didn't play 15 years, and right. he's still playing just man. as many minutes as he started. Don't think we give him enough credit. You know, I right. mean, Seriously. it's almost Seriously. like scary, man. Seriously. I mean, it it, not to rank him as one of the best to ever play. Right. Right. I mean. I remember the first time playing against him in an actual game. He was so much bigger and stronger than everybody at that position. And me and Tayshawn was sitting on the bench because, you know, at that time he was a pass first type of guy. He still is a pass first type of guy. And we were like, hey, you know what, we we better beat up on him now because once he figures figures it out, we ain't gonna have a chance. And and in that playoff game, he kind of figured it out and had 25 straight points on us. I looked at Tay, I said, Tay, bro, he figured it out, man. That might've been our last time the year before that of beating up on LeBron James because now this kid is about to take over the lead. I will say this, though. I thought LeBron early in his career was he, he, he just came out and played. Like, he was just better than everybody. Uh, where I give LeBron a ton of credit, and uh, it's funny, Paul Pierce and I were talking about it, uh, uh, and Kevin, uh, at Paul's retirement, um, how the Cleveland LeBron was so much different than the Miami LeBron. Uh, the Cleveland LeBron, uh, we would run plays and he would get food. We could trick him. We could do things. Sometimes his athletic ability and his instincts would figure it out anyway. The Miami LeBron was a student of the game. He was prepared. He's, he's transformed so many times, but I feel that second year, yeah, I think he was he was on another planet. And it got to the point where we were just kind of, I'm a pretty good basketball player. But I'm kind of just watching him do his thing right now because he's just, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know where he is, but mentally, I mean, he was like shooting 60% for weeks, you know, and I mean, he wasn't missing. He made it easy then. It's like, all right, cool. I'll be here on defense getting some stops. I'll be open whenever you guys need me. And the player to coach against and one most difficult and going through him with the, in the playoffs was LeBron James. This guy was looking in your mouth like right there and just calling it, it was telling the players exactly what was going to happen on the play that you call. But that change, and you, you know this, like we, we beat him a couple times when he was in Cleveland. He was not that way. I, I've never seen a change in a player. Uh, I knew we were in trouble in Miami uh, when we were coaching. When he was in Cleveland, he was just playing right, basketball. Right, right. We get to... Miami and he's in Miami now and he's calling our plays out. He's staring over at our bench. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, he's reading stuff and yeah. I remember saying, oh, "Oh, this is not uh, this is not <laughs> good." Great. I mean, I remember for years I always caught so much flack, of, you know, us being the, the better team or whatever we was at, at one point in the in the Eastern Conference Finals and people not realizing like it's 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 tough to get past this motherfucker. I don't care 
who you are, you know what I mean? Yeah. And see him come to the West and be able to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's a testament to his greatness and, you know, his IQ to the game. Because LeBron <laughs> is tough to deal with on the floor. So we want we need wins. So, like, I want him to play yeah. for sure. But when he's not out there, the game is definitely easier <laughs> <laughs> for us. You know, not having him out there on the floor <laughs> is uh, less of a headache. I remember the distinct moment sitting next to Thibodeau, and we call a play, and he's calling out our actions. Uh, 21 down, they're going over here, and this is LeBron in the Miami. In Cleveland, he didn't know what we were writing. Didn't study it. And it was amazing. I, it, it was a sad and proud moment at the same time. Sad because I was thinking, this is not good for us. Uh, proud uh, that I was thinking, he's become a student. Uh, he's learned that, you know, it takes more than just ability uh, to win. And you knew it was coming. You knew he was going to start winning. The one thing I don't leave this game with is any idea whatsoever what to do with him. I, you know, as a coach, you're supposed to have some idea. I don't have a clue, okay? I, I don't. When we double-teamed him, he made the right play every time. When we didn't double-team him, he, he, he made every jump shot he took, it seemed like, and then he gets the ball to the basket and draws fouls. So you would like to come out of game one and say, wow, I, at least we found – a game plan we think will work. I can't, I can't say I've done that. He He's unbelievable. I don't know who's been more faithful to their just being disciplined to the game. Like, Bron knows every scheme, knows every coach, knows every player. He knows players in college. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we talking about shit like this. Probably the smartest player in, in our game, uh, which you couple that with the experience that he has, the physical tools, the skill, the work ethic, it ends up equaling out to one of the most unstoppable players to ever play this game. He can just, ex he can explain this game forward and back. He has a very high IQ, basketball IQ, right? Wow. It's unbelievable. So you talk about somebody to know the playbook, know where everybody's supposed to be, know the other team's coaches, playbook, style of coaching, how his ball club's going to play. Like, Bron's one of them where you'll be like, we going into Philly tonight. He'd be like, no, but they just hired the, the, the new defensive coach. But he was at Georgetown for three years, and I played for him one time at a camp, and he, he his, this is how they're going to play us. And you'd be like, what? There's nobody at that height and size that can move that fast and also go through contact and still score. We've never seen it before. Right. Right. And still make his teammates better. Right. Right. So he's leading in so many different ways. He can score. He can defend. He can rebound. He, he can assist. We've never seen that at a guy that size and that fast and that strong. Right. But also we forget he's the smartest dude. Right. See, people, I, t I keep telling people his basketball IQ is so far above everybody else. He reads situation, he reads the game. Okay, I need to score now. Oh, let me get so-and-so involved. He could do it all. And I think at the end of the day, to pass two Lakers, you're on the Lakers. Right. And now you're gonna pass me, and then eventually Kareem to be the all-time leading scorer? Wow, <laughs> you gotta give it to him. Yeah. LeBron James is the first player that I've never seen another player that I can compare to. You know, there's always been six, eight guys who were super talented, who were terrific players, but they all weighed like 220, 30 pounds. I don't think we've ever had a guy, uh, you know, who, you know, Tracy, uh, Scotty Pippen, who are all guys, six, seven, six, eight, great defenders, great scores, very athletic. But LeBron outweighed those guys by 30 pounds. And I, I, we talk about it all the time, like, ooh, man, who, this is a freak of nature. You know, he'll, he'll come in and, like, he won't say anything for a while, and then he'll see something, and he'll just, like, stop it and start talking, and he talks exactly like a coach. He's like, well, if X2 comes over this, this, this block and then uh, X5 flashes here to the paint, the backside should be free. I'm like, 
a dude talks like he's been an NBA coach for like a decade already. And he's, he's got a head coaching job. Uh, just a little stuff like that. Like I, did y'all see the clip, uh, from the bubble where he stood up and he was like, it's our ball. It ain't our ball. It ain't our ball. It's our ball, ain't it? It's our ball. Hey! The refs like made a mistake and like gave the ball on the baseline, gave it to the team, gave it to the other team and they're going down the other way instead of our ball baseline out of bounds. I didn't realize it. Coaches didn't realize it. Like nobody else realized it. And LeBron, you, you got the sound bite of him looking over. He's like, isn't it our ball? Isn't it our ball? And of course it was, you know, and he, they stopped the whole game and give us the ball back. Just, just little things like that. Like, I don't, I, I don't think his mind is ever not, not churning, not working. Like if you watch him play, he's always playing chess before he even puts his body into the game. His mind's there first. And when you're doing that, when you're playing chess and everybody's playing checkers, you're always a step ahead. You can continue to, to just push the number out. This man's mind is a stinking computer. We're playing in the playoffs. Uh, I think it was Detroit. He's calling out their substitution patterns. He goes, hey, in two minutes, they're bringing in Aaron Baines and they're taking this out. So let's go on a run. When Baines comes in, Channing's going to come in. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, Eastern Conference Finals. This is a true story from a Toronto player. And I was there because he was guarding me. They come out of a timeout. And Kyle Lowry throws his hands up, whatever. And the guy goes, dang, I didn't see the call. Bron goes, you're supposed to be in the corner. Uh, and then you're going to cut across. He's going to sit a down screen. You're going to come over. We're going to switch that. And Kyle's going to play me one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember asking him this question when he was rookie. I said, you played a game like you've been in the game for 10 years. You know, why, why is that? He said, well, what I did growing up is I studied all of the older great players that came before and I learned from watching those tapes. So he's a student of the game, and his basketball IQ is what I love the most. Like, it's scary because there's times that he'll, like, be in a post-up, and he'll be like, Shump, if he move, if he move, cut. Cut right behind him if he move. <laughs> and he'll start his dribble. And everything he's saying, you just watch it happen. And the moment that man flinch, I'll sprint behind it, catch, dunk. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on the court. I'm just like... Even I'm sitting there baffled. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope with the man. Like, he going to do some stuff, but he can break, like you said, he can break it down. X4 did this, so I did this. Right. If X3 does this, there's no way he can recover to this. I don't even have to look over there. I know he's going to be there. I can just throw it. He's dominated this era yes. of basketball yeah. that, that he's played in. And everything that he's learned, he's taught himself. Right. He hasn't had... That, that Bill OG. Russell, that he hasn't had that JoJo White right. or that that OG to sit right. down and talk. He's Man. been the guy, you know, which is, you know, head-wise, I mean. Had to figure it out. He's got to be a basketball savant genius, just Man. totally on another different level that, you know, arguably we haven't seen in this league. I mean, yeah. even when we talk about Jordan right. and Kareem. I'm the best strategy against Garden LeBron is try to limit his easy opportunities first. Transition, you know, he's out there running the lane or pushing full court, getting easy layups. You limit those points and you force him to take contested two point shots. You have your best chance of guarding him, but he's known he can make those tough shots also. There is a sense of helplessness. I mean, you're just like in the middle of his personal highlight tape, is like when he's knocking down shots and he's in that zone. There's just pretty much nothing you can do about it. You know, you just pretty much have to accept that greatness is happening. I know the feeling. Because he's getting slower. The athleticism is going down just a little bit. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little, a, just a little yeah. bit. He has to think more. He has to play the game smarter, wiser. You know, so something most people had to do at like a 31, 30. He's doing it now. Right. So instead of just using his brute strength like he was when he was younger, he has to be wiser now. Yeah. So I think, you know, this yeah. is like his best basketball. Like yeah. or just overall. You know, when he first came back, I was 22, 23. So I was just young. a young kid trying to help Cleveland patch up their relationship <laughs> yeah, with him. Right, right. I got drafted the year after. So when I came in, it was like, are you going to be better than LeBron? Are you? <laughs> that was my first question when right. I got into Cleveland. So it was mixed emotions the whole time that we were uh, competitors. And then when he came back a a as my teammate, you right, know what I mean? Right. Came back to Cleveland. That's his home. I definitely feel like me learning from him helped I accelerate my understanding of the game that we're in, the business that we're in, because I was watching him deal with it in, in front of the camera, off the camera, being LeBron James. That comes with his own responsibility. So 
not only was he teaching me off the court, but on the court, this man is a savant. He's a, he's a genius in terms of how he prepares, how he shakes, takes care of his body, how he treats his body, what he does every single day to be able to be at the top, mm. you know what I mean? To stay at the top. And people want to see that man fail every minute of the Hate day. Him. It's one thing to get to the top, it's another thing to stay there. Like just the, I think what makes him great, his greatest attribute is his ability to do it again tomorrow. Like his ability to recover on a day-to-day -day basis is, it's out of this world. Like it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I remember one game, just we played Utah, I think it was one or two overtimes. And the next morning he was in there, I came in early to get some treatment and he was on the Versa climber, you know, in his, you know, spandex, no shirt on like, you know, busting out 30 minutes on the Versa Climber saying, I got to get ready for the playoffs. Like, I think his level of dedication to his body and his crap, I, I, mean, I think people just see how big and strong he is. And um, it's, uh, I, I, I walk away from those years. You know, it's one thing when you're playing against them, it's easy to, you know, get hater narratives in your head. But then you, when you're with him and you see his dedication to his craft, you see what he puts into it every single day. He is literally the first person there and the last person to leave every single day. And he's, the, he's LeBron James. I've seen this guy roll his ankle and come back and give you about 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm talking about a bad roll ankle. And I'm like, oh, he done. He come right back. I'm out four weeks with this roll ankle. He come right back fourth <laughs> right. quarter, scored 20. It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him and I ain't going to give you no lining. <laughs> But I'm gonna give you everything else. That's why I tell Brown. I'm like, he gave you everything. He gave him everything. When me and him clicked in 2015, I had one of my best years. You know, I was all NBA third team. Brown was like behind the scenes. What's his nickname that they like to call him? The GM? Brown started in 03. By 2005, Brown was the best player in the NBA. Yeah. In 2020, he was still the best player in the NBA. Shit. He was the best player in the NBA no matter what the game did. The game went from two slugs, like slow big man, mm -hmm. to like a stretch four big man, to like back mm -hmm. to two big man, to like me, no you, big me man. Me you out like, there playing the phone to phone. Like, and he's been the best no matter what. When you look at the teams that Bron has carried to championship or carried to the finals, MJ didn't beat the greatest team ever assembled nor did he run up against the greatest team ever assembled every year. You look at the skill set that Braun has, there's nobody that has ever played the game of basketball that can do what LeBron James does on basketball court. Nobody. Well, he's the most scrutinized athlete probably in the history of the world, you know, given the amount of media these days. I thought it was just really cool watching him break through that wall, as, as Steve said. I mean, he had that, that moment this year he, where he broke through to the next level, uh, not only because he got the ring, but the manner in which he did it. The Dallas series, you know, a couple years ago, he struggled in the finals. This time, he totally dominated. And I just think about the maturity. You know, you think back to his Cleveland days, pregame warm-ups, they're doing all the camera stuff, and, you know, it was all fun. It started not being fun for him for a couple of years there. And then I think he just realized the only way that this, this is really fun at this level is to win, and, and he got it done. I've said this before, not just now. I think he's had the most incredible career from an 18-year-old kid to come to the NBA, be one of the five or ten greatest players, has never come close to getting into trouble. In today's society, I think it's amazing. That's saying something. Hell, congrats. I'm being an all-time leading scorer in NBA history. It's even funny to just even say that, you know, coming from where you come from, how hard you grinded for this long. It's been an inspiration since day one. Much love and keep setting the bar high. You know, because I, I, I've set out goals throughout my whole career. Uh, I wanted I want to be rookie of the year. You know, I wanted to be an MVP in this league. I wanted to win championships, be an all-star. I wanted to lead the league in assists. I, I've never said I wanted to lead the league in scoring or for sure never said I wanted to be the all-time leader in scoring. I've never, <laughs> that's never been like a dream of mine. James, a shot in history, and it is! LeBron stands alone! 
I feel like that's what I can still uh, do for it. for any group of guys, for any franchise. I can go out there and still help win multiple championships or win a championship. So that's my mindset. But it's all about the mind. If my mind is sharp and I feel motivated to go out and prepare myself every single day, then you're not going to continue to play this game.